Hey guys and welcome back to another tutorial. This time I'm going to be taking a look at quest logs. That's a, that was a big thing that I wanted to add into my game and I wanted to make it... Uh, I wanted it to fit in with the minimalistic kind of UI that I'm using for the game that I'm creating. So I wanted to kind of mess around with uh, kind of a thing that I'd already seen online and just adapted it a tiny little bit to fit in with my needs. This big old cube here this hosts everything for our quest log. There's nothing else we need other than this cube, and there is quite a lot. It uses a lot of vectors, but don't worry, where we get to that point, I'll explain it. This first page is going to set out uh, the co just the colors for this first one. We'll do a once and a global, and we'll use a color variable. We'll call this one title color. This will be whether you want it to say quest or quest log or whatever it is at the top of the top left of the screen, top right, wherever you want it. And I've set that to yellow and the interactable object is another ca uh, color variable. This is uh, if you want your quest to involve uh, collecting items or you know things like that. And you can have them uh, highlight with your uh, decided color. The next one would be for our quest text and this will be just you know the flavor text for every quest that you uh, add in. Underneath that we're just going to have switch page which you'll find in brains, switch page, next page which is, oh wrong one, <laughs> brains again, next page. On to the next. This is where we're going to set up uh, the locations for our titles and our quests but also the stat of, status of each quest which would be incomplete or complete so we've got four lines here all done with once so it just sets them as soon as the game starts we've got four globals we're keeping everything global so we can reference it ev everywhere else as well as just here this first one would be the left column this will be where the quest title will show up but also where the quest uh, flavor text will show up each on their own individual rows as well and I've set that one to minus 0 0.7, that's just a standard number, you just type in minus 0 0.7. The next column, so we've got two columns and two different rows. That's all we need. So the, the second column, which is the quest status, which is where we've got obviously our complete or incomplete, that is at minus 0.2. Another one, another no these are all number variables by the way, so you go into number, number variable, and you select the new one. And this one is the title row. So this is where the title shows up at the top and we want that at 0 0.8. And then finally the row Y, which uh, I've put one, is where the first quest will start, which is at 0 0.6. So row, row Y1 will be where quest 1 is placed. Ooh, again, we've got a switch page, next page at the end, and that's all we need for that one. Now this is where all the vectors will start coming into it but just bear with me first of all we've got a duration timer of one so duration timer in timing and logic and then you've got this one down here under brains if you just go to done executing and we're going to set a load of things here and um, this will be where all our vectors are but first I've made these two global variables these are text variables one that says completed quest one that says incompleted and they equal two separate text lines that correspond to which variable they are. This is just so we haven't got to look through all the individual text and we can look through text variables because you've generally got a lot less of them and it's a lot easier to find. Vectors. If you don't know what a vector is, I've got this little uh, graphic that I'll pop up now and you can see we have uh, the X and the Y. X being from left to right and the Y from top to bottom and let's say left or right and you've got right of the screen is x plus one and the left of the screen is negative one and the same with y top of the screen being plus one bottom of the screen uh, bottom of the screen being negative one so the center is zero zero if you wanted it right on the right hand side it'd be zero one or conversely on the left it'd be negative one uh, zero <laughs> It's it's relatively similar. We're only using the X and the Y. Obviously, we don't need the Z because we're using uh, two dimensions and not uh, 3D space. So this will be where we set our first one. It'll be where we set the title. We need title X and we need title Y. 
So if we use a vector variable, you just uh, select a vector and a new vector variable and call that title or title one. And you want the x and the y, which you can find in vector components. You want x and y, and we want equals a global left column x value. So that's where that x value comes in from the last page here. And then with the y, we need title row y, uh, which we set as this third one here. Next is where we're going to put all our quests in. If you follow this way, you can put on about 16 quests if you do it the same as this. And it will just bunch them all up a little and it, it, it looks really neat and quite tidy. So first you're going to use uh, quest 1 and then it will be quest 2 and so on and so forth. So you've got quest 1, x and x and y equals for both, both global. We're using the same left column x value for all of these quests. But instead of the title row y, we're going to use row y1. Alright? So every time we're using for a quest variable, we're going to use left column x number variable. But instead of using the title row y, now we're using quests. So we're doing row y1 instead. And then this is the only thing that changes. It'll be the same all the way through for all the quests, up to 16 if you want to. Apart from every other quest now, so quest 2y. Instead of row y1, it'll be row y1 minus 0 0.1. And then when you get to quest 3, it'll be the exact same for the x and the exact same for the y, apart from at the end it's minus 0.2 instead of 0.1. Same again for quest 4, 0.3, and so on and so forth until you fit as many quests as you want. For now, I've only got 7 quests, it just goes down to minus 0 0.6. Now that we've got the quests, we also need to add in the same vectors for where the uh, completion status of the quest will show up, whether it be incomplete or complete. So we need to be able to tell the game where to stick that bit of text. So for each quest that you make, you also need to make a quest status. And it follows the same, uh, same pattern, but instead of using left, we use the row Y this time, but instead of using left column X, we use left column quest X and it will be the same, so x and y, the x is the left column quest status x, and the, uh, the y is row y1, and it will be the same again, where quest 2 is row y1 minus 0.1, and you do that all the way down to however many quests you got, then right at the bottom, switch page to the next page, and that's all your vectors set up, and you're good to go. Now we're good to actually set up the quest log itself and get it to display on screen. For this one I use the, the simplest technique which is uh, toggles, so I've got mine set up to the up direction on the d-pad or L on the keyboard, it seems to be kind of a universal uh, key mapping for online games and stuff like that, uh, quest log is usually found with the L key i found. And what we're going to do for this one is a toggle, uh, which if you go into math you'll find toggle and you want to toggle a global uh, vari a boolean variable which I've just called log screen quest log or whatever you want it to be called so now that we've set that every time we press the button it'll toggle it either to true or false it'll toggle it to the opposite of whichever one it starts on so we want it to say when the log screen is equal to true we want to use this global one every time we do it first thing we're going to do is set the global pace to zero and the z uh, global pace will be on the second page under world settings this will just pause the game, stop you from being attacked and all that good stuff, bad stuff, other stuff, things. <laughs> Alright, this is where my minimalistic UI comes in. I use the letterbox, which you'll find under cameras in the second page. Camera effects, letterbox, that kind of cinematic letterboxing. Uh, you can ignore this one, this is the one I use for my uh, world map. What I've done with this one though is I've played a sound, I've played the human heartbeat sound. And I've played that at the player. And you can just use the player tile or the in world picker to select your character. I'm using this one again because I have uh, multiple characters. Right, we're getting into it now, don't worry. <laughs> the first part of the actual quest screen here. We're going to display the word quests or quest log or whatever you want to display. I want to display that on screen at. You'll find that under modifiers, second page, on screen at, global title one. And then you want to set your font, and then you can use the global title color that we set in the very first page. That's 
everything other than the quests now so all we need to do is add in the quests so if we go here I've got when for every quest that you make you're going to create two boolean variables for each quest one where it's started and one where it's complete this is just much easier to keep track of and you can change the uh, completion status uh, a lot easier this way so we're going to say when quest 1 is started and when that's equal to true we're going to display I've just put you know fetch water for the world I've set up this little scenario for this first quest here and we're going to display that on screen at global quest 1 that other ve uh, that first vector we made for the first quest and we're going to just display that in a large font child did to that we're going to say when uh, global quest 1 is complete if that is equal to true we're going to display globally the completed quest text variable on screen at quest 1 status and for this I've just set it to green but that's just going to show up saying it's complete otherwise we need to add in another child did link underneath that one to say else so if the global quest 1 complete is equal to false then it will come down to this line and display global incomplete quest on screen and global quest 1 status and I've set that to red in the same large font and this is the only line line 11 here that is different for the first quest it's not necessary for any other quest other than the first one where we just bring it back one line to meet this line 9 so it's in the same link and we're going to say else again display just display like find a quest or go fetch a quest go here to get your first quest or whatever it may be and we're going to display that on screen at quest 1 and I've put that in a larger font and I've just put that in white and that's uh, how you set up the quest it's the same then for every single one where you've just got one two three where you've got the quest started quest one complete uh, quest complete of true and then one for else if it isn't and that is the same then for every single quest that you do six seven and so on and that is literally all you need to do in order to get this working and we'll give a, a quick demonstration here if everything works I just select my favorite character we can run around we can jump and we can see that it pauses the game we can look around it says quest at the top but it says find a quest and we can see here that it says quest started I need some water for the well so if we go down here I'll show you now look if we look now we've got fetch water for the well that are in place and it says incomplete so let's just run and get this done <laughs> pick up some water just put it in my pocket I've got um, waterproof pockets or something and I've got quest complete and if we grab the key take a look again and it says fetch water for the well complete that's it for the actual quest log if you want to look at how to actually start and complete quests we'll just take a look at this brain for this guy who starts the quest here it says right at the start when global uh, quest 1 complete that is that second variable one that we put in is equal to false then he does his normal text and he sets global quest 1 started equal to true which changes the text from find a quest to the flavor text that we put and also puts the incomplete status on the quest as well on the same line but then we've got this one where it says else so else if uh, it is then it, he's going to um, say thank you and say his farewells the way we completed the quest was when we hit this well after we would picked up the water when we interacted with it it set global quest one complete equal to true which allowed him to carry on from this else line then when we got in his trigger zone so it ignored these then because this was actually set to true and he said thank you and that set the the status to complete uh, that's it have fun with it change it around see what you think uh, I've gone with that kind of bare bones kind of UI but it's a fun thing to do you can add in as many as you want you can use the right side of the screen the center of the screen as well and you can stick them where you want now that you know how the vectors work or even if you did before you still know where you'd where you're going with it now so that's it thanks for watching Tara.